Hello everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. I've got another cool cooler here. This is an air cooler from Scythe. This is the Mugen 5 Rev B. Makes me wonder if there's a Rev A floating around out there somewhere. Who knows? Let's get this out of the box and see what it can do. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's get this thing out of the box. And it looks like first thing we see is hardware box. It's going to have mounting brackets and associated hardware, I would imagine. And yes, oh, look at that. It even comes with a nice screwdriver. That is nice. Okay, there's base plates, mounting hardware for our different CPU sockets, fan clips. Ah, thermal paste, instructions. So we'll set that off to the side. There's one fan, it is a four pin, so it's a PWM fan. Looks like it pulls 0.13 amps, so it's nice low power. And then there's a little bit of protective foam. And then there's the beast. That really looks nice. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six heat pipes that uh, wrap around and go up both sides of the fin stack. Now when we look at the fin stack, we have 38 fins there in the array. And you'll notice that the entire uh, fin stack is offset from the base. And that is done so that when it sits on the motherboard, and you'll see that here in a little bit, uh, it allows you to offset to one side so if you have any RAM that sticks up high, uh, your RAM won't interfere with the cooler. And then we have two holes down through the center of the stack, and that is for this nice long screwdriver so that you can engage. You can basically take this center screw out if you need to, but you can access this screw on this side, and it is spring-loaded, so you can only put just the right amount of pressure uh, to engage this with the top of your CPU and then there's a second hole on this side that allows you to access that screw. So that is very nice. Now this is uh, this is ready for the latest, let's see here, yeah, the LGA 2066 and the AM4 from AMD so you are covered for your latest sockets. Time to get the cooler assembled. We'll get the base plate and the standoffs and the brackets and everything here all uh, assembled and get the cooler mounted, thermal paste on, and we can do some thermal testing. Now I'll do a quick test fit. Uh, I don't want to forget to peel the protective cover off there when we're ready. But the offset there allows me to set it on there this way, which um, if I had a stick of RAM in this very first slot, it might be a little close, especially if it was some RAM with some tall heat spreaders. But there is actually a little bit of a cutout here to allow for that. Or I can just flip the whole cooler all the way around and uh, you don't have any issues at all clearing the RAM because the cooler is positioned completely on the other side of where your RAM is here in this case. So time for some thermal paste. Now I have the thermal paste evenly distributed on both places there, the top of the CPU and then the base plate here, the base uh, heat sink block. What I like to do is put my thermal paste on there and then I install it one direction, another direction. I'll go back and forth a couple times and then I'll check to make sure I've got a nice even uh, distribution of the paste. And then I will go ahead and mount this. Now I like the spring-loaded mounting screws there because it's kind of foolproof. It's hard to really install it with the wrong amount of pressure as long as you tighten the screws down. You are uh, 
pretty much guaranteed a nice even amount of pressure. When you draw the base plate down against the top of the CPU. So now we have a little bit of an overclock going here to get a little bit of a load going. It is at idle right now, but you can see the temperature has kicked up a little bit. Now we'll go ahead and uh, put a load on it with the Prime 95 and watch the temperature come up. And there we go. So we should start to see some numbers increase and there we go. Again, this is with a fairly mild overclock on it. This is the exhaust side. Start to see some of the motherboard components down there around the VRM pick up with uh, an increase in heat. And back to the fin stack there. Now we'll let this run for a little while and see what it looks like. So we've been running for a little while here. The side of the fin stack is coming in around 29, 30, right around in there. So it has warmed up a little bit. Looking at the exhaust side, we're still in the upper 20s. We don't really seem to break the 30 degree mark, maybe toward the bottom there. And then when we kind of take a peek down there at the heat pipes, of course the heat pipes are no surprise to be the warmest part there. Actually, if I can get in there and look at the block itself. Yeah, we're getting a little warmer there. But it looks like the there we are, a little above 50 there on the bottom of that heat pipe. But it looks like the fin stack is large enough, it has enough mass. We're able to pull the heat away from the CPU. Fan is running about 1200, a little over 1200 RPMs. It is very quiet. And our CPU temperature is right around 80 degrees, 82. I'll have to average the numbers here when I'm done. I will go ahead and put this in a case, but I don't expect to really see much change. So what I'm noticing here, and this is the rear, um, the rear of the case, the exhaust fan at the back of the case, and it's very close to the cooler. Now, I can't really show that with the side of the case. You can't really see through it with this thermal camera, so we'll keep it back here at the back. But anyway, what I'm noticing is my CPU temperatures are actually a little cooler thanks to the help of this rear exhaust fan. It's helping to pull a little more air through the cooler and uh, it's keeping the CPU temperatures uh, a few degrees cooler than I was seeing when it was out, uh, when the motherboard was outside of the case. So that's sort of a nice benefit there from the rear exhaust fan of this particular case. And really most cases have an exhaust fan at the rear, so you will benefit by that. Of course, you can always add a second fan to the cooler and uh, help move a little more air through there too, if you like but it does just come with the one fan. There's always a debate between liquid cooling and air cooling, which one's better. And you can't, you really can't beat the cool factor of a big radiator and the pump and all the fans and all the RGB lighting you have today. Uh, you have the RGB on a lot of air coolers too now, but anyway, the reliability of a good air cooler is also hard to beat. Uh, worst case, when you have a fan failure, your cooler still acts as a very large heat sink. Chances are your case fans are going to move enough air through there. Uh, you're not going to have any issues with your CPU uh, shutting down. Uh, liquid cooling, you have issues where you can have a pump failure, you can have uh, a leak. I will say all the years I've dealt with liquid cooling, though, I've never had a pump failure or a leak. So anyway, uh, aesthetically, the Mugen 5 from Scythe here is a nice looking cooler. Uh, we've got a very big, thick uh, fin stack. We've got nice termination points where they're capped off at the top of the uh, heat pipes. The entire fin stack is also offset so that we have room for uh, extra tall RAM with the heat spreaders that stick up real high. So you don't have a concern with that. 
We have this nice 120 millimeter fan with the rubber isolators at all the corners to help keep uh, things quiet. It ran around 1200 RPMs and it was absolutely whisper uh, quiet at, at full speed. Now, uh, the name of the fan, I'm probably going to slaughter it here, is the Kaze, or it's K-A-Z, could be K's, but I'm going to call it Kaze. The Kaze Flex 120 PWM fan, so it is a four pin fan. Uh, again, very quiet, uh, no problems moving enough air to keep, uh, keep the CPU temperatures down. I did also notice that when this unit was inside of a case, the rear exhaust fan was close enough back here to actually help pull a little more air through. So that tells me that a second fan uh, might help keep temperatures down even cooler uh, if you do a lot of overclocking or uh, put a large load on the CPU. Uh, the cooler comes in a little under $50. I think that's a good value. Uh, you get a lot of nice bang for the buck there. So again, this is the Mugen 5 from Scythe. This is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.